Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Terry Briggs. And I'm Don Johnson. Here's what's happening in your city. Police are cracking down on big rig violators. Today, officers from Grand Prairie and local law enforcement agencies made surprise inspections on more than 60 rock haulers, fuel tankers, semi-trucks, and other commercial vehicles. After pulling them off the highway, authorities put the rigs on portable scales to see if they were overweight. Okay, hit your brake. Yeah. Then the brakes and other safety equipment got checked. For minor violations, the drivers got a ticket. But for others, this was the end of the road. They were arrested and their truck impounded, including one driver who had the same thing happen just a few days ago. He got the equipment out of the impound and he's back operating it again, a second time without fixing the brake violations. So this truck is still operating in an out of service condition that he was put in last week. So now, since he's ignored our out of service order, we're gonna complete our inspection, the driver's gonna to go to jail and we're impounding the equipment again. Bemmett says nearly 50% of the vehicles they pull over have some kind of violation, something everyday drivers should remember when they're on the freeway. I always encourage drivers to try and maintain about twice as much distance from a commercial vehicle of this size as they would a normal vehicle out on the road. Just because if there are violations, it may take this driver a lot farther distance to stop, and if they have to take an invasive action, they need a lot more room to evade. Authorities in North Texas do a commercial vehicle enforcement like this once a month, rotating the location throughout the region to stay ahead of violators. This is Police Memorial Week, a time to pay tribute to the service and sacrifice of the men and women in law enforcement. In Grand Prairie, the ceremony honors two fallen officers, Sergeant Greg Hunter, who was killed in 2004, and Patrolman Lyndon King, who died in 1982. I would like to acknowledge Officer King's survivors here today, his wife Carolyn, their son Michael, and their family. And I would also like to acknowledge Sergeant Hunter's surviving family members, wife Denise and daughter Erin. While we reflect on these tragic deaths and honor those officers' memories, it is comforting to see these two spouses and their children here today and know that Lyndon and Greg's legacies live on. Nationwide, 163 peace officers died in the line of duty last year, including 13 in Texas. The votes are in, and it's a clean sweep for incumbents on the Grand Prairie City Council. Unofficial returns from the May 12th election show incumbent Tony Shotwell defeated former police chief Glenn Hill in District 5. In District 6, incumbent Ron Jensen is returning after beating Cheryl Rios. And in District 8 at large, incumbent Greg Gessner overcame a challenge from Rosemary Bowlby. Voters also decided to extend the existing quarter cent sales tax to continue paying off debt for the public safety building using sales tax revenue. There will be two new faces on the Grand Prairie Independent School Board. Burke Hall topped incumbent B.B. Bingham and Jason Claybrook to win the seat for place five. In place six, incumbent Mike Skinner beat Annette Brigham. And in place seven, Steve Pryor ousted incumbent Paul Martinez. Postal workers are making a special delivery in Grand Prairie. During the week, letter carriers collected donated food items as they dropped off the mail. On Saturday, the local donations were boxed up, loaded onto trucks, and taken to the United Charities Food Bank. This is one day that a lot of them enjoy coming to work and doing it. Just, just to see the thrill when they come back and they want me to go out there and say, hey, look, look what I got. And they open up the back of the door of the truck, post truck. It's full, full of bags where the community just gives back. It's, it's just... It's just so awesome to see that kind of respond from the community. 
The local effort is part of the National Letter Carrier Food Drive, which has collected more than one billion pounds of food since it started in 1992. Dozens of cats and dogs have a new home thanks to a special offer from the Prairie Paws Adoption Center. You're being hurdy. Dogs for you. For 48 hours, the center offered free adoptions and extended hours as part of a promotion called Staying Alive. This is vastly exceeding our expectations. In our wildest dreams, we had hoped to get out. I guess the last time we did this, we got 80 some animals out in three days. Yesterday, we got 70 animals adopted out. So we expect to do about 50 today. This will be the biggest event Grand Prairie has ever had. If you couldn't make the weekend special, but you're still interested in adopting a pet, you can always drop by the shelter or view pets online at gptx.org slash paws. The Grand Prairie Air Hogs run at another championship has officially begun. Even if you don't pick, you still might save us a step. All right? The 2011 American Association champions are now in the midst of spring training under the guidance of second year skipper Ricky Van Asselberg who spent the off-season retooling the roster. Ready to go and excited and, and ready to play baseball and, and, and just the attitude in the clubhouse, there's a, uh, there's a fire under them and, and they're ready to prove a point that they, that they can do the same thing that the team did last year. This is my wife, Annie, everybody. Uh, Van Asselberg and company were able to take a break from their routine to host a meet and greet for fans at Quick Trip Park on the final Saturday before the start of the season. Josh Strong, I'm a right-handed pitcher. I played at Shreveport last year, and I'm from Brampton, Florida. Uh, Ronnie Morales, <laughs> <laughs> played at uh, York, York Revolution last year in Atlantic League. Live in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's my six-year professional pitcher. Players, coaches, and members of the management team were all on hand to introduce themselves, mingle, and let everybody know what they can expect to see from the team in 2012. No, just thank all y'all for being here. We really appreciate it, and glad to have the guys here. We're hoping we can uh, repeat. You know, just to see some people getting fired up outside of our team, it's kind of neat, you know. And so um, I hope to see a lot of fans this year, and um, this is just one of the things that kicks that off. The Air Hogs' first game is May 17th at Laredo before they return to Quick Trip Park for the home opener on Monday, May 21st. For information, call 972-504-9383 or go to airhogsbaseball.com. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Hope you can join us next time.